you mentioned China and the U.S. and the climate cooperation between the two. Um, as you must know, the China U.S. they just had a leader summit in San Francisco not so long ago, and the climate dialogue has pretty much resumed. And so far, I think the trend is the relationship is warming. At least it's not deteriorating anymore. What do you see that China and the United States need to do more on a bilateral uh, scale or on a global scale? I think that um, you know the relationship is a little bit better than it was, but uh, the United States is still pursuing lots of irresponsible anti-China policies, and uh, I really blame the United States for these tensions. We need to end the uh, trade and technology war with China, and then sit down not just uh, one or two people, but actually technical teams that work on a common strategy for decarbonization, an agreed timeline. And uh, it's hard because actually in the United States, uh, we don't have a political framework that's adequate for this. Uh, we still have a powerful fossil fuel sector. So does China with the powerful coal uh, industrial sector. And in the United States, we have coal, we have oil, we have gas. These are powerful lobbies. These are the two big countries that uh, should be cooperating closely, uh, having good relations, and uh, not only uh, a meeting that improves things, but really technical work together so that uh, we can have the confidence that by mid-century, we're with a new energy system worldwide. Uh, let's talk about the United States for a little bit. Um, the public perception tend to view the Democrats as more uh, willing to engage with China and more green energy focused and Republicans are the opposite. I mean, there's this general public view. Uh, now, with the presidential election, it's going to take place within uh, in less than a year. Uh, should China and the world be worried that if a Republican the nominee wins the White House and again, but back away from this climate cooperation. Should we be worried about that? And if so, what should China, the world do to prepare for it? In the United States, the uh, oil, coal and gas lobby has a big influence in both the Republican and the Democratic parties. And uh, this means that uh, we don't have real uh, clarity of our public policies. They passed one piece of legislation in the Congress that gives tax breaks for low carbon uh, energy, but uh, there is no national plan. There is no clear strategy. That's true with uh, Biden in the White House. Uh, it was definitely true with Trump in the White House. It's not acceptable anymore because the world's really in a lot of trouble. And uh, though the American political system is quite corrupt because of the influence of this big money from big oil, coal and gas on our politicians, we can't go on this way. Uh, the world's getting very, very dangerous in terms of the uh, acceleration of the warming and all the consequences that it can bring. So I'm hoping that no matter what happens in the elections, that serious people in the US and China, the top scientists, the top engineers can work together and find a solution. I don't give too much hope for the politicians in the United States, but they don't know very much. But I do have a, a lot of confidence in the expertise of our top engineers, our national laboratories, uh, our scientific uh, cotters. Uh, and so I think that the possibility, no matter what happens in the election, to say, you know, this is too serious to play games and this is too serious for the lobbies. We really need to have a joint program. We need to cooperate on all fronts uh, to put aside uh, differences, um, because really our common interests are very strong. And the reasons for uh, this fighting, which came from the United States side, makes no sense in my opinion.